in the house. Mm-hmm. As always, that either makes us feel stupid. See you again. It's great to see you. Again. He makes us feel stupid uh, every uh, day. Uh, it's like, oh my god! Now we have to talk about something that we don't know anything about. We only have the rest of this hour, Doc. But when we peel back AI, I am always so amazed at AI how it continues to evolve in the digital world. Do we need to pull back on the reins now, or is the artificial horse out of the barn? Oh, it's totally out of the barn. It's gone. It left. It oh, left, no. left a long time ago. Um, no, it's it's amazing what you can do these days. And, and we're actually teaching a grad course over the summer on large language models. And so um, you, you find out more and more what the capabilities of, of what the use cases are. I mean, we're using it to help us be better coders. Like, it used to be old school, right? You sit down and you... You, you'd, you'd write your code, and, and then if you got stuck with something and you're debugging code, you go to a Stack Overflow. You'd go online and like, okay, where's the where's the error code I'm getting? But nowadays, you've got a you've got an AI assistant that sits right there to like and analyze your code real time, and you know that just makes you better coders. From that all the way to, I was just at um, Army U.S. Army Learning Symposium, and at the Learning Symposium, the big emphasis was on AI in the in the classroom and so they were showing off what's called uh, they're using trained GPT models for uh, courses of action they call it COA GPT and so they ha- they're creating on the military side they're 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 all in right they're I mean last time we chatted we were kind of you know this it's w- 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 there's some apprehension there right but not so much there's more I, I think more of it is there's more ease coming out of it as you get more comfortable with the technology. Which brings up... Like, I've, I've, read, like, okay. I'm like, I've read so many different articles on AI. You know, mm-hmm. you read the, the Doomsday articles. Sure, put, sure. put those aside for a minute. But then you then you see scientists that you've heard of and know and respect, and they say, quit worrying about AI because AI is, is, is what we make it to be, and we still have control, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. it's not... It's not a science fiction movie yet. We, you know, you don't know where where that's going. So we call it artificial intelligence. But when you said something like it, it watches your code in real time. It's your real time because it's real time. It's probably slowed way down to try to. Yeah. It, well, it's true. And and back up real quick on the sci-fi piece of it. Um, you know, there's parts of you know when you look at like Star Trek, the ship's computer back in the you know 80s. You, you talk to the computer and then it would. It's already happening, and in some respects, it's even more advanced than that that Star Trek ship sure. computer that was. They didn't uh, call that AI, but it's really what it was. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And if you look at some of the new stuff that's out there by Figure One that's been put out, where they've integrated large language models with robot with robots, right? Um, I highly encourage everyone to go check that out. Just YouTube Figure Zero One, and then look at the the latest research that they've been focused on, where they they take these large language models and they use them and embody them within a robotic entity. Now, are we talking about China here? Because I hear no, this China's is, doing this. this is domestic. Okay. This is domestic, yeah. Okay. yeah. And, of course, China's working on, uh, of course, they're, they're in Japan is, and they're, well, we they're got, big on that. We've got to go to the, the bad stuff first, though, because that's what people are always interested in. And all joking aside, when you talk about the military and six months ago when we last visited they're kind of like well we don't know and six months later they're all in ai military all you start thinking about are are, are flying planes that decide that they're going to take over the world or the skynet type stuff Mm -hmm. and that is absolute it's baked into our dna to be afraid of something like that well and i think to a certain extent i was listening to a podcast the best way to i think answer that that, in my opinion, is I was listening to a podcast that someone asked Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, essentially a very similar question, like, where are we using AI in, in the scientific community? And he was like, we've been using AI for 30, 40 years now, right? It's been, so there's smaller versions of artificial intelligence and AI algorithms that have been out for for many, 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 many years. And so it's, it's one of those things that I think we can, as we move forward, and then you hear about 
like what the military is doing and what they're getting into and what the, it's as long as I don't you I don't see any situation where as an example where that, that in the physics science community there's humans in the loop right there's always a I've got an AI algorithm and then I have a human that has to interpret it and so the same thing still applies to military right I, I you know you still have a lot of there's been AI in usage in the military circles for a very actually you can go back to World War two and easily see AI being used in World War II that far back. G right? Give yeah. us an example of what AI would have been like. Back then, it's in still human in the loop. It's crude. But so, for example, um, there's this concept of um, receiver operator characteristics, or ROC. It's, a, it's an evaluation of a true, uh, it's an evaluation of a true or false, right? And so when I bounce a radar signature off of, uh, let's say, a bomber, and this is old school technology, there would be an algorithm that would analyze that waveform that bounces off the radar and it would give you and there's an algorithm and it's a and it's, it's it's a mathematical algorithm mm -hmm. that says hey is this truly a, a, a is this a, a a bomber that I'm looking at or something smaller in the sky so the and it would be in what's an ROC evaluation and that's a, essentially that's a old school machine learning algorithm and even before that there's been older I mean Thomas Bayes Bayesian probability goes back into the 1700s. I'm trying to get my head around what, so, yeah. <clears throat> what we would consider artificial intelligence and that and that is 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 it modern is it yeah. in, in any sense in my opinion, Oh, gotcha. is, 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 are, are we talking about when, when science or when an entity, whether it be computer or whether it be radar or whatever, mm -hmm. is making assumptions and decisions and things on its own and then feeding it back to the human without the human knowing for a fact that that's true. So, Such as radar signals coming off Sure, of sure. Well, it's a lot of testing, right? It's a lot of evaluation and it's a lot of, like with these, with open AI and chat GPT and things like that, the more advanced heavy lifting that happens with these bigger models, there's thousands of people on the back end that are testing and curating the outputs, right? So it's, it's constantly, there's these new evaluation metrics, these cognitive metrics that are actually um, published for each of the large language models that are out there that show um, like how well it does at certain cognitive tasks, whether you know whether it's a science based, whether it's a coding based, whether it's a general general knowledge question and answer type of uh, of metrics. There's a whole team of people behind these models that tests and, and keeps evaluating. And so the the easiest way to answer that is I would say that. The AIs work best when there's a human in the loop, mm -hmm. right? And and by, left by themselves, they kind of they, they don't really work well. If if that makes sense, you can actually you can see it when you you're, you when they're left to their own devices, just like any, like our conversation here, right? We're a bunch of intelligences, right? And we're better in a. It, when it's the three of us, right? Versus if it's just Mike Pritchard no, no. talking to himself. Pretty confident when you're in the room, we're really smart. <laughs> I, I, I really I, like I'm him. I'm pretty confident Mike Pritchard is better off <laughs> on his own <laughs> without this triumvirate. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty confident in that. We so many times we talked about military applications. We talked about the doomsday side of it, but on the other side of it, you, you know, you got guys like Elon Musk, and he's 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 talking about about implants in in people's brains to help them and true bionics and in, in in arms and legs and and and, and how, how are people like he and his teams um, fostering ai in that what what can that do to help a human being who maybe has an impairment that they would like to correct oh no um, there's uh, a huge amount of um, human movement training that goes into the robot so they they learn that there was uh, if you back up like five years ago they that there was this process of like i have to program the robots movements and then and that's a really heavy that's 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 a really heavy task and so what they found was that you know what if 
I strap uh, a strap a pilot in, so to speak, like a robotic <laughs> pilot, and then I actually have the robot mimic, right? So in other words, I will provide the data as the human avatar for the robot. Just by the actions. Just by the actions, and it records my movements, right? And so that's how they get the movement so smooth with the new robots. Well, that's how we teach there. little kids that's to right. walk. That's exactly right? right. It's exactly right. Yes, that's correct. And that's, it's a very, very simple, it's a very similar Here's the problem with that. Very good. That's exactly right. But here's the problem with that. We teach little kids to walk, and by the time they're teenagers, they want us to leave them alone, and they rebel. <laughs> so what's going to happen with AI? Where we go with that, right? When does it rebel? Yeah, that's a that's a that brings up a whole interesting question around that. And um, insurance companies, I mean, this is kind of getting really interesting. This gets into a really neat part of the conversation. Um, I was at a uh, an insurance conference, so industry hat days when I was on that side of the house. Um, one of the things that they were talking about was, and I and my focus was building AI systems for financial companies. So that was I was at a uh, an insurance co- a conference in Chicago, and they were literally talking about. It, as if it, this was what six seven years ago, they were talking as if this isn't like a. It was a for. It was a foregone conclusion of. Well, what happens when I have a robotic entity that wants to opt out of uh, a social contract or be part of a social contract? To exactly what you're talking about. So, in other words, it brings up a whole host of things. Like if I've got a, ro- a robot that wants to be under product liability by the manufacturer if they do something wrong. They're like, how do I handle that as an insurance company? It was real business conversations. Like, well, that's that's a good point. But what happens if a robot becomes sentient and says, I don't want to be part of that, and I want a social security number? Yeah. This it brings yeah. up a really interesting. I don't. We haven't gotten there yet. Well, how how close? It brings up really interesting. How, how close are we to the HAL 9000? Going, I, am I going to dream when you shut me off? It's. There's conversations around the, the, the new models that are coming out, and I know we touched on this before, but and they call it a singularity. Um, there was conversations like, oh, yeah, that's something that's 20, 25, 30 years out, if ever, that, 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 uh, that sentience would occur. Um, but there's conversations now that because of the advancements in AI that it's much sooner than we had anticipated maybe on the 5 to 10 year time frame there's still some scientists out there that say hey this is this is not going to happen but I have a different remember I, I think I mentioned this before but I have a different view on kind of how that works like Ooh, that's a good tease there wanna, Dr. Yeah. Michael Pritchard I want to know that view Kansas State company. University <laughs> he's going to tell us all about that we continue our conversation on AI I wish we could keep the mics on during the commercial break because he's probably going to say something brilliant there too. Stay tuned. Come on back. Hi, Clark Sanders here with The Last Call. This is your last chance to sign up for one or both of our Royals trips. Trip number one is Saturday, July 27th. We'll leave Salina at 1.30 to head to the K to see the Royals take on the Chicago Cubs at 6.30. Trip number two is on Saturday, August 10th for a game with the St. Louis Cardinals. If you want to go, we need to hear from you by Friday, July 12th. Full details online at KSAL.com. Look for the bus trips tab. The Morning Show on News Radio 1150 KSAL is brought to you by Commercial Tire, your hometown, home owned, and family managed tire store with two locations to serve the Salina area. Get the best quality Dutch Boy paints for your next project at Menards. Save time with a fresh coat in one coat. Dutch Boy's Forever Interior Paint and Primer offers powerhouse protection with its stain blocking, odor reducing technologies. And with Dutch Boy's easy opening smooth pouring container, transforming your home has never been easier. Saving money on Dutch Boy paints at Menards. Number one in customer satisfaction among home improvement retailers, according to J.D. Power. For more information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Hello, I'm Scott Bergkamp, president of Bergkamp Incorporated in Salina, Kansas, and I want to personally invite you to come join our team. Since 1977, we have been building road maintenance equipment for our loyal customers around the world. We recently acquired a new product line and want your help as we continue to grow. We're a family-owned company that understands the importance of a healthy work-life balance. We offer stable work with overtime opportunities, long-term career progression, competitive pay, full benefits, and a generous paid time-off program starting from day one. 
Our company culture is rooted in family values where we treat everyone with respect and our leadership knows you by name. We value your ideas because the best know-how comes directly from our employees. If growing with a locally owned company sounds interesting, we would like to have a conversation with you. I invite you to visit birdcamping.com and click on careers to view our available positions. That's birdcamping.com or just stop by. We look forward to meeting you. Eight thirty four News Radio eleven fifty K S A L A M one zero six seven FM Jeff and Bob it's the extra extra special Dr Michael Pritchard Kansas State University in talking about artificial intelligence and of course the folks didn't get to hear this but <laughs> when we're at commercial break you bring, you, you talk about your students in class and and you encourage them what do you tell your students about AI way that human develops right the cognitive processing and consciousness of a one year old. Right? Do you guys remember when you were one? No. Still have it. Yeah. Two. Still there. Three, four, five. Maybe four. Ten, maybe, yeah. So maybe. Then, and then, you know, three, four, five is when you're, and then the difference between five and ten. We don't call ten-year-olds adults, right? No. Cognitive processing. <clears throat> no. Sometimes we don't call our 25-year-olds adults. No. I've, we tend to have this idea, and this is what I teach my students, is that um, this idea that it's an on or off, all or nothing kind of thinking, which is not the best way to think about it. When we think of these new large language models, large multimodal models that are being developed um, and designed, we think of them as these, we turn them on and they're supposed to be 100 years old, complete wise people and know everything, right? And that's really kind of not the way that you should be kind of viewing it, right? Yeah, they make mistakes. Yeah, they're not always, but give me a human that does perfect as well, right? So there's some things that like using these in these inadvertent gold standards that we put out there for these AIs is kind of really sometimes too lofty mm -hmm. is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. But we have to be thinking about these things as in baby consciousness, like in that that way. And the same thing's happening today with these large language models, right? You kinda have to think about it. Now there's some people that say, dude, consciousness is a completely different conversation. And to a certain extent it can be. Um, but I, I encourage people to kind of look at it as a gradient. So when I'm teaching yeah. in a classroom, well, what about the guy down the down the hallway from you who's teaching English? What's he think about the well, this that, model? Well, yeah, and so and that brings up a lot of interesting uh, conversations, right? And and uh, Bob, you brought up uh, on the on the commercial break the calculators, right? And that the idea of like, well, we would. We math math teachers didn't want to have calculators, no. and and now it's like you don't go to math class without them, right? You right. Just, you don't. Right. And then um, it's the same thing that's happening today. And so, um, you know, our English professors and communication professors, and there's still a division there. There's some that's like don't use them, and it needs to be your own writing. And there's some that are starting to get more acclimated to use it like a calculator, you know. Uh, Help it, let it help you guide you along in the writing process, and they're in integrating it into their curriculums. I, on the coding side, I just I, I take it off the table as terms of a, a, an area for cheating. I just say use it. It's a tool. It's a calculator. Use it for coding. Let it help you make better code. But you should know what your code's doing, right? It's back to it. You still need to be. It's back to that human in the loop piece of it. Um, your code's going to be better if you're working in tandem with a partner, mm -hmm. and then if you're if you're looking at it that way, you're going to come up with really good results. And if you yeah. if, if you take it to the English department, and you, I, I'm I'm trying to dumb it down for 99 percent of us who 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 understand it's out there, but we don't really understand it. If if you're letting AI write a paper for you. Is that really a bad thing as long as you understand what was in that paper and what the meaning of the of the paragraphs that are written are? Because isn't that the purpose of school is to learn and understand, not to you write it out. Hold on. If I can write a great picture, if I can write a great, if I can have AI help me write a great paper about the Civil War, and I understand everything that's in that paper, but AI made the phraseology more appropriate. What what is the bad thing with that? What when you present that paper, <coughs> whose name is on it? 
I don't know when I do when I did math with a calculator. My name was on the paper. Okay. Whose name is on the there was, paper? I never had Casio on any paper I ever did in math. Whose name is on it? Mine. Okay. But if I understand it, and your little assistant too. I, I'm holding a pen in my hand, and I can't write a paper long-handed without the pen. I got to stick. But if I write a paper on it too, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you, didn't, it didn't help me. Think if I use a computer, if I use AI to help me make the sentence better and the paragraph better, what's the bad side of that? Professor, can you help us? Well, I think there's a, a you're, you're getting into a lot. But we're not going to stop it. Areas. We're not I mean, going to we, stop we, it. it. It won't end, right? And so there's a lot of different ways of, of slicing that one up. So if you if there's conversations around, okay, if I if I go that far where I have it write my whole paper for me, right, that you have to disclose at that point that you use the an AI to, to help you with it and what AI models. But if I could regurgitate that paper and I can have a professor ask me questions about the content of that paper and I understand it and I can so, talk about yeah, it. You've learned something but you haven't authored the paper. Yeah. But so I learned it gets, something. It gets interesting. So let's let's take the argument a little different. No, I want to stop here. here. You I'm mad. Now. Because <laughs> I read news articles every day. I used to work at a newspaper. I used to see reporters write sure. stories every day. The editor never had their name on a byline, but the editor had more to do with what that Absolutely. article looked like sure. in a newspaper sure. than the writer did. Well, so know. it brings up an interesting AI is your editor. So AI is your editor, right? Could be. Now here's another way to look at it. Now if you got into a room and said, I'm gonna I am going to i am going to I wanna have a conversation and you slow the process down. Mm -hmm. Let's just slow the process down. And and then you got into a room with 10 other people and let's say you say, hey, I need your help. I'm writing a paper. And then I'm just going to... These are humans notes. in the These room. are humans in the room. Yeah. And you say, hey, I'm writing a paper. Creative humans. And then, you know, you, these are my ideas. And then, and then I want to get ideas from you too as humans, right? Okay, I'm going to write this all down in a conversation. Just having a conversation with people over coffee and then you take all those ideas right and if you said hey ahead of time this is where it gets kind of dicey mm -hmm. is you just said hey everyone okay with me writing a paper and everyone says yeah that's great good deal because i gave you i gave you a couple ideas i gave you a couple ideas you know you got 10 ideas from 10 people you take all that then you take it and you create a new idea out of those 10 mm -hmm. do you have to cite everyone in that conversation it brings up a because the, the, the reality is, think about your schooling. Do you have to cite, you know, do you have to cite all your prior professors? Hmm. Do you have to cite everybody you talked to in 10th grade? Well, don't do you we have live, to cite everybody you talked to in 11th don't grade? Don't we live in that grade? world now, though, that if we talk to them, it's okay, but if we got it out of an encyclopedia or out of a book, we have to cite that? Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, what's and, the difference? And we do have to do that, right? Because if it's intellectual property that was made mm. by mm. another professor mm. or another research team, and you can't take that mm. information and pass it on. But if you just got it. Again, I'm an academic, so I still have to, I'm still bound by you. If you, if someone's published something, you cite that source. Right. You have to get right. it. That's, right. You can't get away from that. Right. But the, the AI part brings a really interesting tweak to the whole thing. So I live with creative teens and 20s, and my son uses GPT whatever. To, for, to, he puts an idea in there, yeah. and bam, I got it. it's amazing Here's how many ideas point. come back. Here's it. I know, it's amazing. Creative. The, the, the question came up uh, in, a, in a forum here that, uh, well, an AI doesn't have creativity. And I was like, well, it depends on how you define creativity. And I said, as an example, let's create a new game that no one's ever thought of. What if we took Dungeons and Dragons and mashed it up with Blackjack? And then we just asked the, the AI, and, can you come up with something real quick to think through a oh, game yeah. and the game mechanics of that? And I thought, as you read through the scenarios, how fascinating was it and how creatively did it do that? It went Which into that room of ideas That's and right. pulled from it and took Bob's and mine and all the great stuff. A million and ideas from over here yes. and a million ideas over here and said, these are the two that make the most sense. What do you think humans do? It's the same thing. Yeah, it's it's same. exactly the same thing. Right. They always say there's nothing new under the sun. If I create something out of nothing, it's thank because you. of my past experience. Yeah, yeah. Exper okay, what? thank you. Past okay. experience. Right. Have you been to the movie theater lately? You seen a, a new idea in a movie lately? And you know, or a story? We call that in our world past experiences for humans, right? 
in the AI world is called training data. It's the same thing. So, and the training data that goes into the AI is human experiences and human knowledge. That's what goes into training these models. To me, the equation that nobody's figured out well, whether whether it's ever going to be there or not is the emotion side of it. The, intelli the intelligence side, the way your brain works, okay. I mean, it's a giant computer. It's a computer. It just happens to be based on on a, a molecular rather than yeah, it's biological. Yeah, yeah, but but emotion. Yes. What, 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 Emotions are program. What's the addition? Well, yeah. What I mean, is emotion? Program. Program. Oh, wait a program. second. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get me into the, the software. Uh, the software in your head. Yeah. That's right. It is emotions a program. Interesting. It is. Hold that thought, and I mean it. And I, I, I will will hit there in just a moment. It's eight forty seven at KSL AI. The topic coming right back. That's the edge software over there, Jeff. Yes, thank you, Dr. Michael Pritchard, Kansas State <laughs> University. So glad. On the last lap, you're around the track. So emotion we software. It. Emotion software. Emotion. Yes. My software. AI and emotions. Good. Good. And emotions is a great example of. We were just chatting. It's it's code, right? It's 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 a co coding process. So you can have software. Uh, human software, right? Biological machinery. We're humans bound by an information system that's called DNA, and just like other animals, and there is a biological machinery behind that, and it's a coding scheme. Regard, however you want to call it, it's a coding scheme, right? And there is program, and over time, as you grow up, you will develop a particular stimulus that creates a coding mechanism that you respond to. It's an, your emotional state to a response is nothing more than software that through your experiences you build up a response to. Because here's the thing. If if and people respond differently to the environments they're in, right? So we might all see the same thing, but respond differently. So, so emotionally, people, right? And that's based on coding. So people born in Salina, Kansas, versus people born in Beijing, China, sure. versus people born in Moscow, Russia. Yeah. They all got the same software. That's right. But That's right. the coders, the people that influence that software as they grow up, is what brings about the differences in how we see the world. Like the training data. Now, we, we do, software can sometimes be broke, right? It's just it happens. That's where you get people with psychological it's issues. It's either that or through birth defects or things like Correct. that that could potentially happen, Correct. right? You, it, through, the, through the manufacturing of, of a human, so to speak, right? If I kind of... That's right. right. It, it, we're bioprinted, right? The, the, and so, the factory messed up. Yeah, and that can happen, right? And that that what can happen after that? So let's say, and everyone does governed by the same DNA sequence, DNA, the same information system in that respect. Um, you mentioned it earlier, like your your prior historical your experiences your world your training data yes so it's your when we when you grow up we're imprinting we're creating a training set for humans as you grow up zero to 20 right and it and at that zero to 20 20 to 30 it, it's you get a lot of that training data and so software helps but then it's the tra the computational engine that underlying mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. one thing, but then the training data that gets added to it creates a whole different animal, so to speak. You can have different responses, and that's what's really interesting about the same way that our models are with large language models. These AIs that we have today, they're bound by the same thing, and so training training these large language models is a huge task. It takes millions and millions and millions. I was reading an article. It's $100 million to train uh, a model. Mm. Yeah. And the new ones are going to be a billion dollars. What, what, so, yeah. what a hear and what you're saying there, because I, I try to relate it back to humans and, 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 and how we should be thinking about this. Mm -hmm. So we all get the, we got, we all got the same software. We're all, we're all doing this, you know, some of it's mechanical, some of it's not. But when, when somebody who grows up in a very, 
uh, Midwestern uh, normal, what we define as normal life, and then they join a cult, and suddenly they become a completely different person. It's because somebody uh, rewrote the software and influenced it with training data that wasn't there before. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what you're talking about. So we can build artificial intelligence in uh, Washington or wherever, it be Caltech or wherever. It be. Right, right. They can build it in China. They can build it in Tokyo. They can build it in Moscow, but it could be completely different in all places absolutely. because of the influences. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, absolutely. So, um, and that's where the conversation around um, the future of conflict, and this is just purely my conjecture, is not going to be over the computational engines themselves, but over the training data. Hmm. So the training data serves as a base for how the model is going to behave. And that's the same with humans. How you train humans serves as a Isn't that the part that should scare us the it's, most? Well, yeah, absolutely, because it's it's not yeah. something scaring. It's something that it's we, we have conflicts over water. We have conflicts over resources. We have conflicts over all these things. And today, economic, economic development of corporations is predicated on them being good data companies. Yeah, yeah. Data. They safeguard their data at all costs. My fear so that's my fear is not Skynet. My fear is Tehran has some brilliant scientists in that city with a completely different way of looking at life. Sure. So if they have if if these scientists and I'm oh, I hate I hate being pulling a, a race or a religion out, but if you have that belief that all infidels must go, and you're the one who's training an AI system, what are you training that to think about Americans? Or if you're American and you want to say anybody from the Middle East are bad people, and now we train our AI with because that's what's in our head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if they're Russians, they must be warmongers. And, and it's and it's imperative. That's so the scariest part. It is scary, and the, it's the, the and as a, a positive note. It's back Please. to the data policing, right? And I use policing as probably the but open sourcing the models is absolutely who's, who, who's so the we police? can see it. It's transparent. Can, is that make, what you mean? It, yes, that's right. So for example, you you have a lot of architectures that are open source and so these large language models are we, we run them in our our classrooms right we download them we run with them we work with them um, we pre-train them we can we can sensitize them to do what we want for research purposes oh man but we need to make this it, it's yeah it's I get the next question so I get the next one okay, okay. Oh my God. Dr. Michael Pritchard right. just a so couple much, minutes left so much okay yes, AI we're going, we're going until 11 today AI yes. assistant <laughs> a special special direction when, when the AI assistant doesn't look like a vacuum cleaner I, I, when do we put skin on it when, and as humans we're comfortable with mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with a Labrador retriever I don't like snakes what is my AI assistant gonna look like what's the possibilities sure sure well we've got we've currently we've got dogs right we've got the right. birds we right. have right. we now have bipeds now yes. um, uh, Unitree just came out with a uh, a uh, fifteen thousand um, dollar robotic humanoid stands about five and a half feet tall and um and then of course you've got tesla with their quad and then you've got i haven't seen any cats yet so but uh that's coming but, for sure <laughs> i've seen a lot of different different robotic entities um and then but for your personal assistant um absolutely that's where the i mean it's going to start out in factories at first right to help keep workers safe from you just harmful gonna environments. you're just going to take a computer and, and, and piece together what you want your assistant to look like? I, I, I want this kind of nose I and think hair. you just came up with a new business model right there. Thank you. Yeah. I think I, I have think, a, I, yeah. I think I have the next, I think I have the next show we do about, about open source because when I, when I hear the term open source, all I think about is there's a piece of software out there that's out there available for everybody on the planet to corrupt. But is maybe open source a better policing model because then everybody gets a chance to see it and somebody can right. raise the red flag and say well, wait a minute yeah that and it's more the second point so, yeah because yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the old school thought was you don't want open source because who knows who's corrupted yeah it. But maybe it's the other way around well there you and there's still pockets of proprietariness <laughs> going on in software development in terms of uh, um, it, 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 just how that all works right do you want but software so much the, 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 that's the thing is I, you, open source 
source has traditionally been the model that generates yeah. the most. Yeah. Do you want Do you want Bill Gates to determine what know. you're going to have, or Steve Jobs, or do you want open source? Know. Last question: Can AI help somebody win an election? You got 30 seconds. Oh my gosh, uh, it, it it already has. Well, their intelligence uh, is artificial was, already. Yeah, there it? was a company that that uh, Cambridge Analytica that was using AI to influence and has. I remember uh, that, that story. Cambridge Analytica. Look that one. So it is it. One. It is has it, already happened. It's so it's it's Not, it's in the DNA of every election right now. Um, I think if you want to win, un underlying something in the social media and the way things move, there is absolutely a little piece of it. That's isn't it scary to know? Sides, all sides. Isn't, all sides it's, trying to bring isn't it scary to know? I'd rather have that artificial intelligence oh, yeah. than what we've got to choose from. We're getting into some good stuff. Here. <laughs> I mean, for cry I mean, I'd rather have Skynet run in my country than. <laughs> What we got going on. Our thanks to Dr. Michael Pritchard, Kansas State University. I hope you're having a great summer. Hey, enjoy it as always. Thank you.